all right man welcome back to my channel today i want to take a coding viet's formula into python now i did this on one of my python courses and i found it very challenging and i thought i would share the procedure on how i went about doing it perhaps there's other ways to do it but we can take a look at the way i solved it another reason for this is i looked online for a bit of help and it was there was very little in the way of assistance on this topic so i thought i'd share my method for the greater good of the human human race so maybe some people will find this useful okay so viet formula what is it you're looking at it right there it looks really scary we've got the uppercase pi multiplication operator and uh, this means as n, uh, the limit of n as it tends to infinity, we're going to multiply infinite factors together. And when I multiply those, well, some number of factors tending towards infinity, many, many factors together, the series should converge, or the product should converge to 2 over pi. And in that way, we can find a solution for pi. Or at least an approximation for pi. The more factors we use, the more factors we add, the closer we will get to pi. Now, if you're anything like me, this looks very, very scary. It says AI, AI up there. Well, I starts at one and the first term and the numerator there will be root two. The second term, A2, will be the square root of two plus a1, which is root 2, which is there before. And this will go on and on and on, on and on, and we'll have nested radicals in the numerator. But anyway, if you're anything like me, this doesn't look very clear. So let's switch to this view. Now it's the same thing. I've still got 2 over pi as the product, and I've just got the factors first three factors written out and you can see the numerator be become increasingly more complicated they get more and more root twos nested within the orig original radical now that's quite a challenge to code this i found so uh, i thought it was really really interesting and i'm quite excited to share it today so the first thing I want to do though, I want to get pi in the numerator and have this written as pi equals a load of factors. So I went about doing that, I rearranged it, conducted a bit of mathematical jiggery pokery and ended up with this equation where I get pi equals 2 times 2 over root 2 times 2 over 2 plus root 2, all rooted, etc, etc, etc. That would go on to infinity if we wanted a perfect approximation. Of, a perfect approximation does not make sense. A more accurate approximation of pi, we will get the more factors we add in to this equation. Now, we can code this in Python, and instead of us writing out hundreds of iterations, we can have the computer do it. And that's the point of this video. So let's make a start. Uh, I'm using Replit, which is a Python compiler. And I'm just gonna quickly, it's a very short script in the end. It took me a lot of effort to get this right. We are going to get the benefits of it very quickly since I've done all the hard work before. First, we need to import the math library. Then I'm going to define a, define a function and I'm going to call it pi underscore approximate. And I'm going to pass it an argument, capital N, which is the number of iterations I want the loop to run through or the number of factors I want to add to my product. Remember, the more factors, the more accurate the approximation. Yeah, that should become clear as we run, run the script a few times. 
So let's finish that off with the colon. Now I'm going to set a variable s for square root. Might as well choose s. And I'm going to have that equal to math square root of 2. So assigns the square root of 2 to the variable s. So s will become 1.41 and change. Next, I want to have a running total. So I'm going to have a, a variable that will store the running product. You know, the accumulated product as we keep multiplying by each successive factor. I'm going to call that, not V, let's call it, it's the, it's the product. It's pi. They both begin with P, so let's call this P. And P is going to equal, well, let's look at this a minute. It starts off as 2. Then I multiply it by 2 over root 2. So I'm going to start P off with 2. So P equals 2. Now I'm going to start a loop and uh, run this loop n number of times. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Colon on the edge. So I'm going to run this loop. I is the placeholder for the loop counter. N is the parameter or the argument I'm going to pass to my function. So if I pass n equal to 5, it'll run through the loop 5 times. Great. Oh, I forgot in for i in range. There we go. Hit return and it should indent a little bit, as is Python's want and syntax requirements. So next I'm going to do the first calculation. I'm going to, v is currently 2. I'm going to multiply it by, its, you know, self times... What did I have? Well, I had 2 over root 2. So that's 2 over, and what was root 2? Well, I made that equal to s. Okay, so that's the first two factors multiplied together. And that'll be stored in v. Now, for the next step, I need to make s equal to this third term, which is the root of 2 plus root 2. So how am I going to do that? I need to change s. I need to update s. So s equals, and it's very simple, it's just the math library square root method. And it's going to be 2, so that's everything in the brackets will get square rooted. 2 plus root 2. And root 2 is s. Yeah, that's still the square root of 2. Now s becomes the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2, which is exactly what we want. Now each time this loop iterate, iterates through, that nested, yeah, this nested denominator will just keep growing. And then it'll keep mul multiplying the, the additional factor every time. Now that was the trickiest part. That took me a long time to figure this out when I was battling through on my own. Next, let's print. Oh, that needs to be P. That needs to be P. I'm updating P each time. You know, the approximation of pi. And I need to print P. And then I come out of the loop. So it's going to print every iteration. We should see values of, you know, approximately pi, but getting closer and closer to pi. We're approaching pi as n approaches infinity. That's called it. Uh, when you do calculus in your A-levels, that's the part you do on limits. Now, next, let's print an empty space. And then let's print the actual value of pi we get from the library. And then we can compare it with our conversion conversion product. Now the final step is I just need to have a space and I just need to call me function pi the prox and I'm going to start off with five iterations. Now that looks like it should be okay. I'm going to run it and I should see five 
five products, then a space, and then the actual value of pi. We'll see how close we are with five iterations or five factors in my product. Please run, please run. Excellent, so you can see one time through it's 2.8, 3.0, 3.1. It's getting closer and closer, let's zoom in. But you can see, I end up at 3.140, whereas pi is 3.141. So this is accurate to two decimal places. Can I improve this? Of course I can. I can try 10 iterations. Let's have a look. Let's zoom in. This time I get 141591, 141592. So this is accurate to five decimal places. We're getting there. But can we get even better? Let's try 20. 20 factors in my product. And now we're getting really close. Where does it, it stop there? Eight, 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 nine. How many have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So with 20 iterations, it's accurate to 11 decimal places. Uh, now, that's it pretty much. Uh, obviously, we could put more and more iterations, get closer and closer, but that should give you a good idea of what we're driving at there. I really enjoyed doing that. I thought it was a fantastic little loop. It looks very simple and elegant at the end, but when you're battling, when you're going at it from scratch, it really was quite challenging. So uh, hopefully that will help some people. Someone will randomly find it on YouTube and it'll help them through their Python exercises. Okay, thank you very much.